It's been a tense few days under the Capitol, and I want to welcome back the President of the West Virginia Senate, and I would say right now the only man in West Virginia that's leading anything. Bill Cole, thank you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it very much. It's uh, been a was an interesting week to say the least. I will tell you what. I know you're running for a Republican and gubernatorial. Uh, you're running as be governor as a Republican. This has been a really weird time under the dome, and it looks like that politics is sort of starting to control the day at the Capitol. No, it's not starting to. It just absolutely is, and it's a shame. I mean, it's, it is truly a shame. You know, we had uh, we had the cigarette tax, uh, which which is probably the only component of bringing income when we talk about a balanced approach to, to balancing the budget uh, this year. And, and it looks like a 45 cent cigarette tax can go when we barely eked it out of the, out of the state Senate. Well, 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 tell me what happened there, because I'm really confused. That, uh, there, there, were, there were attempts by, Republic, or by Democrats to raise it, and then they withdrew it. And then yeah, they... when the bill was on second reading up for uh, in the amendment stage, uh, a couple amendments were offered, one to take it back to a dollar, but gee whiz, in regular session, we sent a dollar down to the House, and obviously it died. So a dollar's a non-starter. Let's, let's just get off of it once and for all. So, so we're back to 45 cents, which is what the governor proposed. Second amendment comes along, and it comes from a, from a Democrat, and it simply ties the first $43 million dollars of, of the cigarette tax to, to fully fund and guarantee funding for PEIA, which would have happened anyway with a with a fully funded budget, but let's take all that fear and and let me tell you something, the Democrats are out there instilling a the fear. Yes, they are. We're not gonna have PEI, we're not gonna have promise scholarship, we're not this program and that program are all gonna end. By the way, they added also a million dollars for youth tobacco cessation. All right. So, so the first million goes to that. Forty-three million goes to, to fund PEI, and we said, "Good amendment. We'll put that right in there." Then uh, one of our uh, Republican senators offered an amendment to take out the other tobacco products, which was about a four million dollar piece. And that was and this. That's cigarette that's the, exactly, and that's when the furor started. And and frankly, we were trying to make the bill as palatable as we could down in the House because we know it's real touch and go. But listen, let's face it. We need this. I'm a Republican. Republican. I'm not a tax guy. I hate That's new what taxes, I'm saying. Yeah. But but we have to do it. It's it's part of being responsible. But anyway, so they went on. The Democrats railed on us for for a half an hour, an hour. Just it was it was as ugly as I've ever seen on the Senate floor. I, I pull up uh, I pull up my leadership team and I said let's just let's just withdraw the amendment. Let's let's take this off the table. It was it was ill advised, so we did. We take it off the table. Now we move to suspend constitutional rules, which takes four fifths. Of the people in the room just because let's do let's get this moving you know they're saying oh we're not doing anything we're not doing anything to pass the budget okay let's do something to pass it let's suspend constitutional rules move it to third reading vote on it and send it down to the house the dems unanimously got in the way of uh, virtually unanimously so got they, in the way of suspending just rules the state Another another thirty five thousand. Another day in the, in the in the Capitol. So the next day comes in. Now you you know that all these guys are going to vote for it, and I'll be darned if they didn't try and derail the whole thing. That is nothing but political gamesmanship, chicanery. They're they're going out of their way. They want to say that they're for for funding the budget and, and PEI, and then they turn right around and vote against the very measure that would secure it. And thank goodness for Cory Palumbo, because he was no the only Democrat that came across, did the right thing, supported it so he could go to the House so we can get this thing done. He was the only one that stood up against leadership. And let me assure you, they came right out of a caucus onto the floor, and then every one of them in lockstep, except for Cory, voted to kill that bill. I had a, a, a re prominent re uh, Democratic House member tell me that nothing's going to happen in the House until two things happen. That number one, that means they're not going to pass the tobacco tax, they're not going to do it, they're going to just try to kill everything until they get a final ex list of expenditure cuts from the, the governor and from the Senate, and they need to be about one day away from 
a crisis where people start to lose jobs. So they're trying to create, as, get as close to the cliff as they can and hope the car doesn't go over. Again, that's political gamesmanship. That's just scare tactics. That's trying to make the citizens feel like we're not doing our job. Listen, this is all to make the Republicans look bad. And the Democrats, if they can do it, they think that's their way back to power. But understand the problems we're dealing with right now are because they've had power for this long, and, uh, unabated. And and, and I, I'll tell you, I, don't, I, I generally don't stand up and be that big partisan hack. But I'll tell you right now, I, I gotta be honest with you, Bray, I'm angry. These guys are slowing down the process. They're being obstructionist, and, and for no reason. They do not have the best interest of West Virginia at heart right now. And, and Bill, there, there's similar shenanigans going on over in the House. Well, there is. And, and then you've got this Liberty Caucus no question. group, which, I, I, quite frankly, I don't understand what their game, because they seem to just want to stop government, and they don't want to govern. They shouldn't have come here if they didn't want to be part of the process. Well, there's no question, and you know, part of part of being in leadership is, is you gotta lead. Right. You gotta lead, and, and, and you're right, those guys, I mean, I don't care whether it's the extreme right or the extreme left, they're, they're doing a good job of being obstructionists in the House. And, and, and what I don't understand is what everybody thinks the end game is. How does this play out? I mean, you know, it Listen, looks now that it can't even get finished next week. You know week. what, Bray, the simple fact that matters, they don't have a clue. They think they do. They think there's broad uh, waste and abuse in, in, in state government. And you know what? There is. But but that's one of the big problems, too. We're dealing with a budgeting process that, that isn't transparent, that is antiquated, that doesn't allow the legislators to actually get at the guts of state government. We, by the time they have special revenue and, and this attaches to this and it's a Above the line, below the line, and buckets—it's a train wreck. And and we're t we're looking at a small piece of state government and trying to come up with all these cuts. The cuts are there, but it's going to take a governor that's willing to go in and restructure state government, and it's going to take somebody with the guts to simplify that budgeting process to bring transparency to it. And you know how much money is coming in—that's the total revenue. What do we spend? We spend right down to zero in order of importance. That's how to pass a budget. And and, and Bill, here's what's so interesting to me: I had a high-ranking bureaucrat in the state government tell me, because I know you all been, your people been having hearings and they're bringing in secretaries and all this, trying to find pots of money. And I said, so are the, is that really reveal everything? And he said, oh no, they're just sort of showing what they think they have to show. There's a lot more, but, but you can't find it, especially in, in any kind of normal time frame. I mean, you, you so, so, so it's, it's, even the bureaucrats have some control in this process. Oh, absolutely, they do, and, they, and you're right. They'll hide the they'll they'll hide money that they have. They'll say, well, that's contractually obligated, and you know, without really getting in and doing an investigation, you can't run that one to ground every time. And and let me let me assure you, the the easy money to get to, the old cash sweeps, and all all that that's that's been sucked up trying to bring in 2016, which I'll remind your viewers is going to be around 500 million dollars short. So and and going, you know, we're setting ourselves up for for the same play all over again in fiscal seventeen. So, uh, Bill, do you think this thing gets resolved this coming week, or is it going to take? two more weeks. I think so. I will the Senate will have their budget uh, in committee on tomorrow and Monday and uh, hopefully hopefully uh, the the Senate Dems will will decide to suspend constitutional rules and move this budget straight through so we can give it to the House, let the House make their changes and then see if we can get together. But we have to. We got to take the uncertainty off the table. This is the, this is nonsense. It's gone on long enough. The only man leading right now, Bill Cole, thank you so much.